Joining me in the studio now is Pilar Marrero. She uh, is co-host of the Pundets. Yes. And uh, and she's here to talk about Venezuela. Yes. Uh, so uh, we are trying to, we're trying really hard to have an honest conversation about Venezuela uh, that looks at all different sides without being biased in, in any direction. So uh, let's have a real conversation about how bad is it in Venezuela right now? Well, I'm Venezuelan, first of all, I wanna mm -hmm. make that clear. Um, I have many friends, family living there, uh, brothers, sisters, cousins, whatever. I've been living here for a long time, but I'm very much in contact with people there. The situation is, is very dire. Um, in terms of the economic situation, there's, um, in Venezuela, there's something that has, doesn't happen often in the world, which is six straight years of economic contraction. We have uh, the highest hyperinflation in the world. Um, and we have a government that has unfortunately become authoritarian and repressive. We are seeing a, um, a number of violations, human rights violations. As the UN human rights chief put it in her report last week, um, there's very serious violations, um, killings of opposition leaders, jailings of journalists, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's 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 very hard to to watch uh, what's going on. I grew up in Venezuela in another time in the 70s and 80s, and um, a lot of things have happened. But in rea the reality that we live today there, it's it's very very difficult, and there doesn't seem to be an easy way out of it. At this point. So, <clears throat> you agree with John Bolton that we should invade? No, actually, I think most Venezuelans don't. It, mm -hmm. I've seen poll after poll uh, that Venezuelans are ov obviously, uh, for a good reason, afraid of a military invasion, but at the same time, they're so desperate. I have conversations, for example, with, with my brother, who's a very modern guy, not a, into politics at all, he works in a bank. And he's like, you know, I don't think Venezuela can stand the current situation any longer. There's a lot, you know, immediately when you talk about Venezuela, with progressives in the United States, you get, you know, you have to go to the conversation of intervention, sanctions. As a Venezuelan, I want people to know what's going on there. Let's set aside the issue of the United States history, which I know very well. You know, I've, I'm a journalist, so I've covered the, for example, the diasporas that have come to the United States over the years due to the wars and the interventions in El Salvador and Guatemala. I have many friends from Argentina, from Chile. I'm very well aware of all that. However, we need to look at Venezuela with um, very clear eyes and realize that the socialist experiment in Venezuela went beyond what was promised, or at <laughs> least, or on the other hand, maybe it fell short of what was promised. And what it's turned into, it's, it's a real disaster. There's a humanitarian crisis. There's at least four million Venezuelans have left the country at this point. The projection is that up to eight million may end up leaving. And, and it's a very small country, it's only 30 million people. So Pilar, uh, <clears throat> I have trouble discerning what's happening on the ground, yes. uh, which is similar to the situation in Syria, because they have so much propaganda on both sides. Yes. And so, um, you know, you got the right wing neocons in this country, yes. and you know, uh, with John Bolton writing, sending troops on his notepad, and that's what I'm referring to. Sure. And I don't trust Trump for a second, and he puts out a, a tweet. Neither do I. Yeah, uh, right <laughs> after uh, Guaidado. Guaido. Uh, what is it? Guaido. Guaido, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Guaido uh, comes out and says, I'm now the new president. So he's obviously coordinating with the US, and that's problematic. Uh, if you ask me. So uh, I don't really trust their version of the story. And then we found out, of course, that uh, for example, the burning of the trucks, it, that was not Maduro, yeah. it was actually the opposition. Yeah. Uh, so uh, on the other hand, I don't trust Maduro. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, some people are taking what he says as gospel, which I think is crazy. I, I don't know why you would. I mean, he's a politician at a bare minimum, right? Uh, let alone one that has created what it appears to be at a, again at a bare minimum a gigantic mess in Venezuela. So then, how do I know what's actually happening? You talk to Venezuelans like me, people who are connected there, who are not really ideological. 
I'm, I'm a progressive. You know, I'm someone who has been in this country for a while, who is an immigration reporter, um, who have had many ties with progressives all my life. Um, and by any means, most Venezuelans I know personally are not conservative or Trump uh, supporters. Uh, but the problem is that when we talk about Venezuela and we say what's happening there is not what you think is happening, uh, we really need to see a change into, uh, we, really, we really need to see new elections in Venezuela. The last, the last two elections that were celebrated there by Maduro were uh, extremely problematic, uh, I would say straight out fraud, uh, fraudulent. And um, this is the reason why the opposition, I think, and the opposition actually is a very broad group of people. There's a number of parties that go from the left to the moderate right. There's no really hard right in Venezuela. And I think it's a problem to look at what the opposition is doing only through the eye of the United States. You need, you need to set that aside a little bit, and, and particularly because you see there's a geopolitical fight going on. There's the Russians were uh, just in the news because they flew two military planes into the civil airport of Maiketia, out, right outside of Caracas this weekend with the Minister of Defense of Russia, a hundred officers and who knows what cargo. So they've sold $11 billion in weapons to Venezuela over the last 10 years. So there's a level in which there's a geopolitical, like neo Cold War going on there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want people to look at the at Venezuelans and their situation. And you know, whenever a Venezuelan speaks out about this, we get called right wing and pro Trump and pro imperialist and all that. And it's very sad to see that that kind of reaction. I want people to kind of be more clear eyed and realize that maybe that guy says he's on your side ideologically, but maybe he's not. And maybe he's just another fascist. Yeah, so um, what do we do now? That's the most difficult question. I, I think that if progressives, if people who, who have the principles of justice um, don't get engaged in the reality of Venezuela and don't push their own government and the government of Maduro into a democratic transition of in Venezuela or at least into some kind of negotiation, you're gonna leave it all up to the right wing. And who knows what can happen? I, I don't, like you, I don't trust Trump either. I'm, I'm nothing, you know, no, nothing close to a Trump supporter. Um, but I, I feel that progressives, not all, but many, um, their immediate reaction is to shut me off and say, ah, oh, it's the United States, it's all about the sanctions, when real sanctions actually didn't start happening until 2017, and the oil sanctions didn't happen until two months ago. Venezuela was a partner, a trade partner of the United States until two months ago. So there's no sanctions. Some uh, Somebody told me the other day there's an embargo. I think they're confusing Venezuela with Cuba. There's no embargo. So there's a yeah. lot of responsibility on the government of Venezuela for yeah. the mess that we're So in. the economic disaster began before the sanctions. Um, it did. But now the sanctions at the, at the same time, I'm torn on that. It's, and so am I. So it, it certainly doesn't help the people of Venezuela. On the other hand, it creates pressure on Maduro. Yes. So it's quite intractable. Uh, so how about Guaido? Do you, do you support what he did or no? I, you know, there's, I think a lot of Venezuelans are now putting their trust in Guaido according to some polls that I've seen because it's an alternative. You know, it's the mm -hmm. guy who's there, he's speaking with a very different voice than the Maduro, you know, the Maduro government. The Maduro government is very, very, um, uh, it's very strong in their rhetoric. It's, it's very negative in their in their rhetoric, and um, and Guaido gave you know I think a plausible constitutional explanation for his swearing in as let's say president or interim president, which is Maduro committed fraud in the last election. He essentially uh, the last time the National Assembly was elected in 2015 when the opposition gained the majority for the first time since 1998, he essentially went around it and said, those elections were not good, I'm gonna pick the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court is gonna say the assembly cannot govern. So he went around them and created this constituent assembly that is governing instead. So they're saying he's, he's illegitimate and, and there's an argument for that, I think. John Bolton went on Fox News and said, um, we are looking forward to protecting American business interests there, mm -hmm. including the American oil companies. 
No, nah. I you know, and so they're back in Guaido. I can't have us doing a you know an unofficial coup of Maduro back Guaido, and Guaido comes in and goes, uh, "Congratulations, mission accomplished." Exxon Mobil gets all the oil. <laughs> so I you know, but I, I can't have that. I can't have the status quo because Maduro's you know killing the country. There's extrajudicial judicial killings. Yes, uh, a million uh, kids are not going to school anymore. Right. It's an absolute disaster. Yeah. I, it's as big a no-win situation as, as you could almost Let imagine. Let me tell you something about the history of oil in Venezuela. When it was found in the early 20th century, of course, a lot of concessions were given to American companies. But there were concessions. They were not the owners of the oil. Oil was nationalized, not by Hugo Chavez, but by the president he launched a coup against, Carlos Andres Perez, in the 70s. Since then, the company, PDVSA, the oil company, as, of course, is completely in the hands of, of the Venezuelan people, of the Venezuelan government, and essentially has been used as a piggy bank of the government of Chavez and Maduro. It's now in tatters. The production of oil is, it's, has essentially uh, become, has come down significantly because they haven't reinvested. Um, they're deprofessionalized. Uh, deprofessionalized the company by taking out the engineers and the people who actually knew their job uh, and put political people and military people instead. It's, it's a real mess. Uh, the electric grid doesn't work. Uh, we have blackouts again yesterday and today. And Maduro keeps saying it's sabotage. It's no sabotage. No, nah, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. So. Look, uh, one thing that Guaido could do to earn credibility, which uh, he almost certainly will not do, and I don't know what his real motives are, is he could say, look, I wanna be clear, if I uh, get in charge, I'm gonna do two things. One is we will have a real election. I'm only the interim president, I will definitely- That's what he said he was gonna do. Okay, yeah, all right, and so is he not going to run? He said he's not going to run. Okay, Yes. Uh, and then again, the question is, do you believe him? Which leads to the point number two, which is equally important. Uh, under no circumstances will any American oil companies get any contracts with Venezuela. Now, if he says that and America still supports him, okay, right? Again, if you can trust him, but he's not gonna say that because then America would go, yeah. Actually, I think the Trump administration's attitude has, yes, probably something to do with oil, but I think it has to do more with 2020 and the elections and saying, oh, we won against socialism, right? Because you saw it in the State of the Union, he talked about Venezuela, and then he turned and said, and the Democrats are like Venezuela, right? No, I know it's partly that, but uh, Pilar, let's keep it real. Uh, the Trump administration and all the neocons are on the war path on against two countries, Iran and Venezuela. There's only one thing that connects those two countries, oil, okay? So, and there's one country we invaded, Iraq, oil, okay? North Korea, we ain't gonna invade, okay? Because they don't have any oil. So it's definitely, definitely about the oil. Uh, if you ask a lot of Venezuelans today, would you mind having the American companies go in instead of having your freedom and a good government that will not torture you and kill you and starve you? A lot of people will say yes. Yes, but the problem is when the American oil companies come or even American banana companies, they also bring the torture and the human rights abuses. It's and already the, there. Um, okay, so. It, 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 it barely can get any worse than it is now. Not a great way to solve it, but okay. No, 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 but I, I don't think what, I don't think Guaido would be, I don't think Guaido would um, present himself. He has said he's just gonna be an interim president. And of course the problem is how do we incorporate all the different parties and whether we incorporate Chavistas or not, that's gonna be a sticking point there. I know I know it's gonna be very difficult. Other countries have done it, you know, after dictatorships and, and very harsh, you know, wars and things like that. It's happened. So I think it can happen in Venezuela. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, however we put pressure on minus uh, war uh, to make sure there are real elections in Venezuela, because that last election was not real. And release the political prisoners, let anyone run except Guaido, <laughs> okay? Because he has to have credibility, that's why. I'm not against Guaido in that sense. I'm saying you need him to have credibility that he's not doing it for his own power, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, 
I, I think handing it over to America is not the right answer. But the current situation is also definitely not the right answer. Uh, yeah, and we don't want the Russians and the Cubans there either. And they are there. Yes, and, the and so that's the deal Maduro <laughs> made. Yes. yes. So this is the the Venezuelan people being squeezed between these different power players like Russia and the US. The US does not necessarily have your best interest in mind, but neither does Russia. Mm -mm. So if you're a progressive and you think, no, Putin is a good guy with, I agree with George W. Bush. I looked into his eyes and he has a good soul and he cares about the people of Venezuela. Sure. You are officially nuts if you believe that. You also are nuts if you think that's what Trump thinks. Neither one of them thinks that, okay? So we gotta find a way to protect the people of Venezuela. Pilar, thank you for coming and having this conversation. Really Thanks appreciate for it. for having me. Like what you see? Click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.